Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about rental inventory. This works for any kind of rental situation or even like a library where you can check things out and back in again. Let's say you're a bookstore and you have a certain rental shelf and you let people take certain books and check them out, check them back in, or whatever kind of products you happen to rent. I was going to use video store for my example for class where you, we rent videos, but those don't exist anymore, do they? So we'll just go with general rental inventory or bookstore inventory that offers rentals. So this will be a simple scenario where you've got a list of items like books. You have whether they're in stock or not and what their due date back is. And once that due date passes, we'll mark them back in stock. Today's question comes from Graham from South Africa, one of my gold members. Graham says, I have a very simple inventory requirement. Items are checked out, and then once their due date arrives, I just want access to automatically check them back into inventory. That's it. Can this be done in a daily event? Now, I emailed Graham back and forth, asked him a few questions. Literally, all he wants to do is on a specific date, whenever the due date passes, he wants access to automatically mark those items back into inventory. No manual check-in, check-out, any of that stuff. So I'm going to cover that in this video. And then after we handle that problem, I'm going to show you in the extended cut for the members how to handle a check-in and check-out for each specific item in your rental inventory. But let's take a look at Graham's needs first here and do exactly what he wants to do. Since he's a gold member, he gets to pretty much call the shots. My gold members get away with everything. Okay, let's start with a copy of my blank customer template. You can grab this off my website. There's a link down below. You can download it. It's absolutely free. Let's open it up. So let's start by creating a product table. You can call it whatever you want to. I'm going to call it product table. You can call it your book table or whatever you, whatever you do. I was going to do video store for my first example, but then I thought to myself, there's no video stores anymore, So, there, but there are still bookstores. All right, so we'll just use product ID. That's my auto number. And then, of course, the description. Now, I'm assuming that each item in this table is a specific unique item, not like a group of items. This isn't like a product category, all right, where you've got like a whole bunch of copies of The Hobbit, right? This is each product has its own specific record. Now we've got in stock, which indicates whether or not this item is in stock. And then if it's out of stock, we'll set a due date. Okay. Save that as my product table. Primary key, yes. All right. Let's put some data in it. Let's say we've got a copy of The Hobbit. Actually, let's go Hobbit. The. That's how you like to do it, right? That's in stock. We've got clockwork. Angels, one of my favorite books. We've got, oh, I don't know, a Dungeon Master's Guide. We've got a Star Trek novel. Just pick one. I'm a nerd. Okay, so you got a bunch of books in here. And let's say these guys are in stock. These two are out of stock. So this guy's due date. Now, today's date is January 5th, I think. Yeah, January 5th, 2021. So let's say this guy is due back on January 7th, 21. And this Star Trek novel was, was due back 1230 of 20. So that was due back last week. Okay. Actually, let's make two of them due back previously. Let's go 122720. 20. So, so two books were due back last week, and one isn't due back yet. Now, all Graham wants is when he starts up his database in like a daily event, we'll do it when the main menu starts up. When you open up your database, this main menu is set up as the startup form. If you don't know how to do that, go watch the video where I show you how to build this blank template. It's also free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. All right, we set this as the startup form for the database. So when this guy starts up, when you come into the office every day and you start up your, your, uh, your, your database, the main menu loads and it will run that event. And it will take these guys and put them back into inventory if their due date is less than today's date. And how do we do that? We do that with an update query. All right, so let's close this. Let's make an update query. So create, query design. Bring in the table you want to mess with. So product T, we're going to update data in this product table. I've got other videos on making update queries. If you've never done an update query before, go watch those videos first and come back to this one. Now, in our update query, we're going to set some criteria first. What's the criteria? Well, in stock, all right, in stock has to be false. It's not in stock. It's checked out. 
And again, I've got videos on query criteria. If you've never done any work with query criteria, try saying that 10 times fast, right? Query criteria. Then go watch those two. I'll put links down below. Or criteria query. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. What's the second criteria? Well, the second criteria is that the due date has to be less than, or you can do less than or equal to, whichever you want to, today's date. So you can put in their date. If you want it to the minute, put now, but I'll do today's date. So less than or equal to today. So if it was checked out yesterday, put it back in the inventory today. All right. So let's save this. This will be my product return queue. Now, so far, it's still a select query. Okay, if I run this now, you'll just see what's going to be updated. All right, that's great. So let's go back to design view. Now comes the task of turning this into an update query. All right, we've got it. So we're selecting the right records as a select query. Now we change it to an update query. So hit the update button right here under query type. Now you'll see an update to field here. All right, what do you want to change these fields to if these criteria are met? Well, I'm going to change in stock update to true. And then due date, we're going to just make it null. All right, it's no longer due. It's back in stock. All right, null means blanket. All right, save that. Close it. Now, if I were to just run this here, it would do its job. But I don't want it to run there. I want it to run when this guy starts up the database. Okay, so let's right-click, design view. Now, there are a couple of different ways you could do this. You could make a startup macro that doesn't involve any programming. I'm not a big fan of macros, honestly. I like VBA. Programming is not scary. And for those of you who've never done any VBA programming, go watch my intro to VBA. Again, it's a free video. I'll put a link to it down below. Go watch that. It's real simple, and we can accomplish what we need with just one line of code. Okay? All you got to do is learn a little bit of VBA, and your databases can become really, really powerful. So where do we put that magical one line of code? Well, right here, go to where the main menu's properties are, find events, then we're going to go to onload, right there. That's, that's the function that runs when the form or report is loaded or opened. There's an on open to, they're roughly the same thing. As far as you're concerned, they're basically the same thing. Hit the dot, dot, dot button right there. That's the builder button. All right, you may get asked what kind of builder do you want? You want the code builder. I've got that turned off on my system. All right, but the cursor will be placed right here where it says private sub form load. Don't worry about all the rest of that stuff. That's all just stuff that I've got in there in the template. All right, you want to worry about right there, private sub form load. Put a couple extra spaces, tab in, all right, one line of code. I want to run that query when the database starts up. So do command, docmd dot open query space, and then the query name inside of quotes. All right, product return queue. Now that right there will make the query do its job. And that's all you need. But you'll, but you'll get a, a warning message like, oh, this is about to run, you know, uh, th this query is about to run and, and change records. If you want to avoid that, we'll just turn the warnings off. Do command dot set warnings false. That turns the warnings off. Make sure you turn them back on when you're done. Do command dot set warnings true. That's all. All right, that's just to turn those war annoying warning messages off. It'll just happen in the background. All right. Save it. Now let's go back over here. Close that. I'm going to simulate the database starting by just opening up main menu. It's set as the startup form for this database. Double click, run it. Nothing appears to happen, but let's check our product table. All right, look at that. Notice those two books that were due in December are now marked back in stock and their due dates are null because the product return query ran when the form started up it set them back in stock and blanked the due dates now of course you'll have to verify that those books have actually been returned but it works and Graham this is I hope what you asked for right you may also want to throw up a little warning message like I created this thing in the template I explained it in the video where I built this template it's just a little whole hello world you can use this for putting messages in here Okay, what we can do is we can use this to display that the inventory has been processed. All right, it's basically a little message box without using the actual message box command. Okay, and we can actually use this button to run that product return, right? Return inventory. You can do it manually if you want to. All right, right click, build event, code builder if you want to. 
We'll put that same, instead of status hello world in here, here, let me scroll down so you can see it all. Instead of that, right, we'll just do this stuff. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into here. Now, I don't like having duplicate code in multiple places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into its own subroutine. All right, so form load and the hello world button click can both call the same thing. Watch this. I'm going to come right down here below these guys. I'm going to go private sub. That means only this form can use this subroutine. Okay, return inventory. So I made my own subroutine and I called it return inventory. Now I'm going to take this code, cut that out, paste it in here. All right, now I can get rid of it out of the form load. And watch this. All I have to say in here is return inventory. And then in here I can say return inventory. See? Now both that button and the form load will call return inventory, which does the same thing. You don't want duplicated code. Okay? And one more thing, I created my own little sub called status, where it just puts stuff in that status box. So down here, I'm going to say status inventory marked return. So that you know when you open up your form that your inventory is a marked return. All right, let's close this and open it up. And there we go. Inventory marked return. All right, let's double check it. Let's do one more thing in here. Let's go in here. Let's say this Dungeon Master's Guide was actually due on the 3rd. All right, and today's the 5th. So now, if I click Return Inventory, Inventory Marked Returned, let's go check it. Look at that. It's back in stock. Okay? So, Graham, I hope that answers your question as far as how to automatically have that stuff put back in your stock when your database starts up. And like I said earlier, members in the extended cut, we're going to have an actual check-in, check-out system for each of your books. You'll be able to pick the book, pick the customer, check it out. It'll mark the date and time. We'll lock that field so you can't change the customer or click check out again. Then when the customer brings the book back, you'll go back to the book, click check in. It'll find the last check out, mark them checked in, and so on. And that'll be in the extended cut for members. Right, here it is. I open up The Hobbit. I've got it checked out right now. Richard has it checked out right now. This is grade. This is grade. You can't change these. All right, but I can certainly check it back in. Click, and now it's checked back in, and it's marked in stock. All right, go to a different book. Superman Returns. Well, yeah, I was going to do video store initially, but I decided to do bookstore because there are no more video stores. All right, let's check it out. Check out. Okay, I didn't pick a customer, so it drops down the customer box for me. Let's say Jean-Luc checks it out. Now I can hit check out again. Boom. Marks them checked out, graze that, graze that. You can't do anything with it until it's checked back in. Click. See that? We'll cover this in the extended cut video for members. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. 
If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.